بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على نبينا الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد الحمد لله الذي أحيانا بعدما أماتنا وإليه المشور We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we meet again to continue with our weekly reminder and we are still with the uh, uh, kitab Matna Abi Shuja Rahimahullah tabaraka wa ta'ala and <coughs> we completed Kitab Al-Tahara one of the main areas of Al-Ibadat fi al-fiqh al-Islami as we know, <coughs> the Islamic fiqh covers four main areas. We have uh, Babul al Ibadat, Acts of Worship, Al Mu'amalat, Transactions, Al Ahwal al Shakhsiya, the human relations where we learn about Nikah, Talaq, Mirath, and so forth and so on. And then there is Babul Jinayat. Uh, this is mainly about uh, the, the criminal rules, about al hudud and the rest. So the first bab that we are still in is Kitab Bab al-Ibadat, the acts of worship. And we have done with Kitab al-Tahara. Kitab al-Tahara, about how we are supposed to clean ourselves, to prepare ourselves before Salah how to take complete bath, how to make wudu, the nullifiers of wudu, and so forth and so on. And today the Sheikh will be introducing us to Kitabu Ahkam Salah, the book of the rules of Salah, Ahkam Salah. Before going through what the Sheikh has uh, written for us, it is a common knowledge among the Muslims that Salah is the most important is the most important act of worship in Islam. After Tawheed, then what follows is a salah. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from the time that salah was legislated throughout his lifetime, alayhi salatu was salam, up to just before his death. He used to remind the Muslims about Salah. As-Salah, As-Salah, wa ma malakat aymanukum. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he kept reminding his ummah about the importance of Salah, about the ruling of Salah, about the benefits or the, the huge reward that a person who is keen with his Salah will get and about the severe punishment that awaits an individual who is not keen with his salah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to give a general and a specific advice about salah. Some of his companions will come to him alayhi salatu wa salam, will come to him seeking for advice. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will remind them about salah. We remember <coughs> that qissa, that was narrated by Abi Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu anhu about that sahabi, that individual who came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam seeking a brief, precise advice about Islam. He came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, allimni wa awjiz. Aw Ya Rasulullah, ridhni wa awjiz. He came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam seeking a brief, precise, important advice about Islam. And the first thing that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him is, إِذَا قُمْتَ فِي صَلَاتِكَ فَصَلِّ صَلَاتَ مُوَدِّعِينَ If you stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a prayer for salah, then always do your best to have as much khushu as if you are praying your last and final salah. So every time you come to salah, then you pray as if that is your final opportunity in this dunya to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for salah. And as I said, just before his death, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he reminded his ummah, as-salah, as-salah, 
وَمَا بَلَكَ قِيْمَانُكُمْ That my main advice to you is stick to this ibadah, stick to your salah. And scholars, the Muslim scholars, since then, from the time of the Sahabas, all along up to this time, we are still reminded about the importance of salah. And scholars have differed whether Tariq al-Salah is kafir or not, especially the one who leaves the salah just because of the laziness. Because an individual who leaves salah, who doesn't pray, and he feels that salah is not that important, salah is not obligatory. You can fail to pray and you can still remain as a Muslim. There is no difference among the scholars about the ruling of such an individual that he is no longer a Muslim. But the difference is a person who prays sometimes. And sometimes because of the laziness he fails to pray what is his hukum? Is he a kafir or not? And I remember even yesterday I happened to pray the Salat al-Fajr here. And the sheikh who led the prayer was still emphasizing about the importance of Salat. And he was lamenting that there are some parents who are not keen to teach their children about salah, to know whether their families, their wives, their children, they know salah, they understand the salah or not. They know what to recite in salah or not. So sending the kids to madrasa is not enough because you never know the competence of that particular uh, tutor who attends to your children. So it is our responsibility to make sure that our families, our children, they understand their salah. They understand what to, what to recite in salah. They can, they can optionally, willingly perform their salahs whether you are there, whether you are home or not. Because this is the matter of Jannah and Nar. Any person who, will, who is not keen with his prayer will end up in Jahannam al-Iyadu Billah unless the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reach him. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrates about the people of Jahannam. مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرْ قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ The people of Jahannam will be asked, why are you in Jahannam? How comes that you found yourself here? And one of the response they will give is that we never used to pray. We never used to establish the prayer. And remember that story of that Sahabi who was about to die and uh, it was difficult for him to pronounce the Shahada. Well, that is a different story. By the way, it is a weak story about, uh, they say that he used to pray, he used to perform his salahs, he used to do everything, but he used to give preference to his wife compared to his mother. But that story is a weak story. Uh, it has no basis in the Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it doesn't relate with Salah. So Salah is important because it is a matter of Jannah and Ra'ar. It is a matter of our future. So we have to give it the utmost importance that it requires. And Salah, it is not an ibadah that a person can just see people performing and also he performs and perfects. No, it is one of the ibadahs that a Muslim has to learn. A Muslim has to uh, know how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught the salah, how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed the salah. If a person will have not learned salah from the sahih sources, from the sound Islamic sources, then he will always be committing mistakes in his salah. And sometimes he might also be thinking that he is, papa, he is praying and perhaps he's just exercising. He is just doing exercise and not getting any reward before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this happened even during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We remember that individual who entered the masjid while Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sitting with his companions. And then he entered and performed his salah. And, the, and then went and joined the gathering of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he gave salam, assalamu alaykum. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded to his salam, to his salam. And he said, wa alaykum salam. And then he told him, irji' fa salli fa innaka lam tusalli. Go back and perform your salah again. Because according to me, your teacher, you have not prayed. The sahabi, he feels that he has prayed. He has performed his salah. But the feedback that he is getting from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is that you have not prayed. Meaning you have committed mistakes in your salah 
that has made you your salah not to be accepted and it is as if you have not prayed at all. So he, he tried the second time and the third time and then now he admitted that Ya Rasulullah, I could not do better than this فَعَلِّمْنِي He asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama to teach him how to perform the salah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallama taught him the correct way of performing salah. So this is, it is such an important ibadah which is required that we have to learn it and to put it into practice in the rest of our lives. As we know, my dear brothers, Salah was legislated in the 10th year after prophethood. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he started his da'wah in Mecca. And for the, uh, for the first 10 years, the main concentration was about Tawheed, about Aqeedah. People to understand, to know their Creator, their Rabb well. To know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly. And then after the 10th year of prophethood, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was taken to the historical journey of Al-Isra wal Mi'raj. And it was during this night journey that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was gifted a number of gifts. And one of the gifts that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received were these five daily prayers. That there were 50 in number before. And we remember the conversation that had been between Nabi Musa alayhi salam and Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That Nabi Musa alayhi salam, he kept telling Nabi Muhammad, go back to your Lord and ask for reduction because your ummah will not be able to establish all these uh, prayers in a day. And finally, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the plea of our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the, 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 the salahs were reduced up to five in number but they remained 50 in reward. So today, we pray five times a day but we are rewarded as if we have prayed 50 times a day. وَذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِيهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ Because Al-Hasanatu بِعَشْرِ أَمْثَالِهَا So we pray, you know your best to perfect your salah. One salah that you pray, we are rewarded as if you have prayed 10 salahs. And 5 times 10, that is 50. And this ummah, it is ummah marhumah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored this ummah. That they have the shortest lifespan compared to the previous ummahs. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them that the, the few acts of worship that they do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards abundantly. And because of that, they will be, they will be the majority in the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For from that particular time, when the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was given these five daily prayers, up to the moment he left this dunya, Rasulullah was very keen with his salah as an individual, emphasized that to his sahabas and his ummah after him alayhi salatu wasalam. That is why it is important for us not to assume that we already know the salah, but to go through again what Abi Shuja has written for us and to refresh and to remind ourselves about the rules and regulations of this important ibadah bi'idhnillah tabarak wa ta'ala. After that introduction, next week, bi'idhnillah, we will start the writings or the statements of Abu Shuja, rahimahullah, going through the salah, uh, and he started with in definitions, and then the timings for salah. Inna salata kanat ala al-mu'mineen kitaban mawquta, and that is what we will begin with next week, bi'idhnillah, tabarak wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us tawfiq. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan warzuqna tiba'ah. Wa arina al-baatila baatilan warzuqna jitinaabah. Allahumma ina nas'aluka al-huda wa al-tuqa wa al-afafa wa al-ghina. Allahumma ahsin aqibatana fi al-umuri kulliha. Wa ajirna min khizzi al-dunya wa adhaab al-akhirah. Allahumma inna ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husn ibadatik. Allahumma salih ahwalana wa ahwal al-muslimin. اللهم فرج عنا وعن جميع المسلمين اللهم اقض حوائجنا وحوائج جميع المسلمين يا رب العالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وجزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته